there's nothing invasive here. You're not putting magnets in the brain. You're not putting implants in the brain, which are fine to do if you need to. And there are things. Mm -hmm. There are indications for that, yeah. That are indications for that. But this is much safer than that. And you're talking about mapping the brain, locating this area with an fMRI, correct? Yeah. So we use a GPS system, uh, a targeting system using advanced MRI and fMRI to locate the specific node and where exactly it is. Because you want to direct the magnetic field, which is an external magnetic field outside of the head. It's, as you mentioned, nothing invasive. But the magnetic field can be targeted to within 2.5 centimeters from the skin surface. And also the epicenter, you would like to target the specific area you want to treat. So you put a A head holder with a device which has on it a GPS system. We have the 3D, you know, the X, Y, and Z coordinates, north, south, east, west, plugged in electronically into the head holder. And you have an image that you can see where the epicenter is. And then you, you, you concentrate or you, you angle your head holder so that the sweet spot of the magnetic field is over the area of the brain that you want to switch off or on and to get more into rhythm with the brain's um, natural default mode network. Okay. And so you then start putting magnetic impulses. It switches on and off a magnet. So um, um, it's an electromagnet that switches click, 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 click. You know that noise in an MRI scan? It's just the same as an MRI magnet, except within a small device. And it changes the magnetic field within the tissues. If you remember from high school physics, if you have a magnet switching on and off, and you have fluid in that field, you'll create a current. So what we're doing is creating a current in the wires that represent the white matter wiring in the brain to switch it on and make it rhythmic rather than firing in a way that's incoherent. How long does the treatment last and how often do you have to do it? And for how many days in a row so there's a huge breakthrough. You know, TMS started in 2010, around 2010, and the treatment required one treatment a day of an hour a day for 30 days. Right. And now, since about two and a half years ago, and now finally FDA approved, is the Theta Burst concentrated um, TMS where it's just three minutes takes three minutes to do what used to take an hour, and you can do five of those treatments in one day so that rather than having treatment for a month, you can get a full course, five treatments a day for five days. Okay, so there's three minutes, Mm -hmm. five treatments a day for five days. For five days. So you're talking 15 minutes a day. Separated over a couple of hours, yeah. Sure, Mm -hmm. but we're talking about 15 minutes of treatment a day spread out throughout the day for five days. Five days. And what's the efficacy? 80% of people with this treatment feel much be- uh, significantly better um, as opposed to just over 60% before. So there's a huge improvement in, uh, in efficacy. 80% of the people have a marked improvement in depression and anxiety. Yes, and this is without pharmacology. They're not on medication. Right. And on follow-up, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, what's so the longevity? The, du- the durability is very good. This is the work that's going on now. We've been doing this only for two or three years now, but it looks from all early reports that it's as or more durable than the traditional treatment. Yeah, it's the precision that's making the difference that's, here, that's right? That's right. I think it's two parts. It's the delivery of this theta burst, a more concentrated, powerful, I think that's the right term, without having biologically negative side effects, as well as the fact that we can see the abnormality better with advanced imaging and fMRI to specifically target the area rather than the general region. Yeah. There are people suffering with depression and anxiety that is debilitating. 
you know what I'm talking about. People that just simply suicidal. Yeah. Absolutely cannot put one foot in front of the other. And they've tried medications and so often they say, I was on the medication, but I felt like a zombie. The side effects were so bad for me. It was like, which is worse? And then for some people where DNA tests are done and then they dial in the medication, and I'm not trying to be anti-medication here, but when you're talking about a non-pharmacological, non-invasive, non-side effect, 80% efficacy, long-term durability durability here, Why is this not being screamed from the mountaintops? Why is this not a three-inch screamer headline in every newspaper in the country? Why are we having to talk about this? Because I can tell you, I bet you we can stop 100 cars on Sunset Boulevard right now, and 98 of them will not have heard about this, and we'll be in the other two. Yeah. I think the early adopters, you know, it's like technology. The early advent of the internet people didn't know what was you know what it was but at some point this will take hold 